Okay, good morning slash afternoon, depending on where you are in the globe. Uh, my name is Brian Prout, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the official unveiling of the partnership between Stardog and Lincurious, uh, which is a tandem that fully allows enterprises to visualize the knowledge graph and to unleash their data. Before we get started here, just want to go over a few housekeeping notes. Um, if you find yourself experiencing any audio technical issues, please just try logging back into the, to the Zoom. Um, you can either dial into the audio via telephone or through your computer. Uh, as expected, this webinar is being recorded and a copy of it, along with the slides we walked through, will be sent to you within 48 hours. Uh, during the presentation, we encourage everybody to leave questions. There's a, a little Q&A box at the bottom of the console, and we'll aim to get through as many of those as we can uh, as we end near, near the end of our time together. Uh, so we've got a packed agenda, so I want to jump straight in. So just to set the stage a little bit, here are the, the items that we intend to, to cover. So we'll do quick intros of our, of our presenters today, we'll walk through Linkurious Stardog overviews, and then really dive into to the problem set here, which is the, the notion of data silos, um, which will then pivot into our solution, uh, the knowledge graph, and how it's made uh, even more valuable by, by visualizing that data. Um, and then as mentioned, we will wrap things up with a Q&A at the end. So let's do a quick introduction. So prior to uh, me joining the team at Stardog, again, this is Brian Proud. I run customer success here. I held a variety of roles and functions uh, within a global consulting firm, text analytics provider, and most recently, uh, I was in MarTech Software. Um, in the middle, we have Mike Grove, uh, who is our co-founder and VP of engineering. Mike has over 15 years experience in AI, semantic technology, and graph databases. Prior to Stardog, Mike performed research on the use of graph-based graph technologies in pervasive computing environments while at Fujitsu Labs in America. He's a grad of the University of Maryland, College Park, and computer science, an alumnus of its Mind Lab, a seminal research group in the semantic web technology. Uh, Jean Villadou is co-founder of Lincurious and a startup specialized in graph visualization. Uh, with Lincurious, he has worked with various Fortune 500 companies to help them find insights in complex connected data, to include fraud, cybersecurity, intelligence, and so on, which we'll get into more detail in a bit. Uh, previously, he worked in the consulting industry on R&D projects and in sales. Jean has a degree in political science and a degree in competitive intelligence. So a little bit about Stardog. So Stardog is the enterprise knowledge graph platform. And what we allow organizations to do is query massive disparate data and transform that into actionable insights uh, by combining a cutting edge graph database with a world-class knowledge toolkit. So it's that unique combination of, of graph database and knowledge toolkit that lets us start out go beyond just playing graph databases and mere graph analytics platforms. And it's that knowledge toolkit that allows us to support a wider and deeper range of services than any other graph or data unification platform. Um, our partners, a smattering of whom are pictured in this slide, include Fortune 2000 companies in financial services, healthcare, energy, government, to name a few. And they all use Stardog's knowledge graph platform to illuminate their enterprise data silo. We are privately held, headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, where it's a balmy 78 degrees Fahrenheit today. Lincurious, startup based in Paris with 15 or so employees, um, really primarily focused on detecting and investigating insights that are hidden within graph data. Uh, they boast over 50 clients, including the French Ministry of Finances, NASA, Cisco, to name a few. Uh, and of course, as evidenced by this webinar, they are an official Stardog partner, and we, we couldn't be more happy to have them aboard. So now that we've got some of the pleasantries out of the way, we're going to jump right into what we view as, as one of the kind of the, the largest problems facing all enterprises today, and that is this notion of data silos. Um, to walk through this problem statement and, and how we think we have the solution is, is Mike Grove. So I'll turn it over to my friend, Mike. Mike. Thanks, Brian. Um, so as Brian said, uh, I want to start by describing the problem data silos uh, that enterprises face that we believe an enterprise knowledge graph is uniquely well-suited to solve. And you know, we'll go 
over what an enterprise knowledge graph is and how after you've built one, effectively visualizing its contents can be crucial for many key use cases of the knowledge graph. Enterprises today have come to understand the strategic importance of their data and are starting to treat it like the first class enterprise asset that it is. Everyone from governments to sports teams is trying to get more out of their data, to become more data driven and to more effectively use it to inform and drive their decision making processes. In the financial world, they're creating comprehensive data sets to aid in anti-money laundering or regulatory compliance. In healthcare and life sciences, they're building data sets necessary to better understand and combat disease. Commercial enterprises are building customer 360 applications to better understand and monetize their customers. They're counting on their data scientists to use all that data to tell them what people are going to buy before those people even know that they're going to buy it. No matter what the project is or its goals, all of these things are tied together by a single common thread. And that is that they need access to all of the relevant data in order to be successful. The problem is that the current layout of any modern enterprise is antithetical to this common thread. The enterprise data landscape is wildly fragmented by the data silo. These silos were created in good faith they address specific pain points within these enterprises, and for the most part, they solve them. Unfortunately, the pieces of the puzzle, the data that we know about our customers, for example, isn't in just one silo. It's in five or 10 or more. It's spread across different systems using every format and every technology created. Some of it's locked away as dark data because it's contained in unstructured content, text, video, audio, and not unable to be effectively queried or utilized. So as enterprises evolve and aim to make better use of their data, trying to take this wider view and aggregate data from all over the enterprise, these data silos become the single biggest impediment for them to move forward and achieve their goals. This need for horizontal access to all of the relevant data for the new class of data-driven applications is pushing enterprises to evolve. Unfortunately for them, the existing solutions don't cut it. Making bigger, badder data warehouses just creates more silos. And data lakes are not really a solution because they confuse co-location with unification. Just because the data is in one place doesn't mean it's queryable or even usable. And new solutions that attempt to address the problem of data silos really only target a specific slice of the data landscape and don't offer any comprehensive solution and risk becoming data silos themselves. In a world where increasingly the difference between success and failure comes down to how effectively you're able to manage and leverage your data, unconnected data is a liability, plain and simple. And because enterprise data is so isolated and disconnected by the data silo, enterprises are failing to effectively utilize, analyze, and monetize their data. Everything from data science to reporting is limited by this inherently disconnected environment. What these enterprises need is something that unifies their data and breaks down the walls of these silos. At NASA, our longest tenured customer, they were faced with the challenge of managing 100,000 plus strong workforce, many of whom were retiring and taking valuable expertise with them, which made their mission of getting back to the moon and Mars all the more difficult. We worked with them to identify the critical data sources across all 13 NASA centers that accurately captured information about their workforce and built their first knowledge graph providing them a comprehensive view of all the folks contributing to the NASA mission. In the years since that initial deployment, which integrated LDAP, some web services, and several relational databases, over 60 additional data sources have been added. These new sources run the gamut from Excel spreadsheets masquerading as relational databases to SharePoint dumps and even some raw graph data. These additional sources expand the knowledge graph into related areas such as engineering design and project planning, with the aim of putting the knowledge graph into mission control to help NASA reach the stars. And that's what success looks like, the creation of a coherent, unified data ecosystem that these enterprises need to survive. Something that lets them surmount the roadblocks presented by data silos to give them the backbone data infrastructure that they need to achieve their goals. Now that we've introduced the problem, let's dig a bit into the solution. Enterprise data as a whole is in fact a graph, but most organizations aren't managing it as such. 
Their existing solutions still rely on legacy approaches where only support one kind of data. They're very much stuck in thinking about the problem in old ways. But graph is the right data model for the enterprise. Graphs are all about connections and connectedness, and that's how you most effectively represent and utilize enterprise data at scale. Graph is the data model for the enterprise going forward, and it will be for the next 20 or more years. In fact, this has happened already. Facebook, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Google, services that you probably use almost every day, they're all powered by knowledge graphs. Knowledge graph is central to how they manage your personal data, your professional data, and the data of the web. These are some of the largest companies in the world, and they are now fundamentally knowledge graph based enterprises. So here's a very high level view of what the enterprise knowledge graph looks like. We see the reality of the enterprise data landscape, the highly siloed environment where a notional graph of data is physically disconnected and unable to be cleanly brought together. But each of these sources represents a piece of the puzzle, a slice of the data about our domain. And the enterprise knowledge graph is how we represent and operationalize all of that data. Using graph as the data model, we have the right abstraction to let us connect data together at scale, regardless of its type, to build our knowledge graph. And here, we have a different view of that picture. At the top, we can see the data consumers, applications, reports, data science, <clears throat> all the people who need access to the data. And at the bottom, we see the raw data silos. Normally, there's not much sitting in between those who need the information and the, the raw data. That is to say, the data consumers have to deal themselves with this fractured, siloed environment. They're building applications or doing analytics over a single source and accepting an incomplete view of the data. Well, they have to deal with unifying multiple sources themselves, reusing, repeating existing work because existing warehouses don't have the right combination that they need for their specific use case. Well, they have to rely on the creation of yet another warehouse with more copies of the same data sets. This is why data scientists spend 80% of their time doing data wrangling and cleanup as opposed to actual data science. It's a good illustration as to why disconnected data is such a liability. So it provides the right abstraction, the graph, to manage and unify those data silos. It lets consumers of the data and the enterprise at large stop worrying that those distinctions exist and move forward with a single unified and actionable set of data. Within Sardog, we highlight the declarative graph model. This is one of the integral components of the knowledge toolkit which is key to building a true enterprise knowledge graph. At its core, an enterprise knowledge graph has a graph database. But in order to support the use cases that we've touched on, and we'll go, into, go more into later, it needs to have more than just that core database. It needs to have the knowledge toolkit embedded in the heart of the system. And that starts with the data model. Because after all, an enterprise knowledge graph is about knowledge. It knows that there's more to A being connected to B and that simple physical connection. That connection actually means something. A is a part of B, or knows B, or purchased B. An enterprise knowledge graph must be, able to, must be able to capture and utilize that distinction. It also incorporates new data sources and new data types easily without having to start over or make yet another copy of the data. This kind of operational agility to confront the variety of data types within the enterprise, regardless of where the data sits or what it looks like. It builds value over time. Each progressive step, each data silo integrated into the whole, adds exponentially more value to the knowledge graph while enabling new use cases as more and more of the enterprise's data is brought together. Finally, it must provide capabilities to verify and safeguard the data it holds, because accurate and valid data is crucial for any data-driven application. It must also tightly integrate with features like machine learning and NLP, so that it can effectively support the kinds of use cases today's data-driven enterprises envision. Enterprise knowledge graphs are the only way for an organization to manage and use their data at scale, to help you build the picture out of connecting the dots, because that's where knowledge comes from, and that's what graphs are all about. With an enterprise knowledge graph in place, the next key for many use cases is effectively visualizing it. Jean will now go over how Lincurious is able to visualize the Startog knowledge graph and operationalize the insights contained within it. 
Thank you very much, Mike, for this uh, explanation of the power of knowledge graphs. As you said, I'm going to try to, to um, help everyone who is attending today understand Olinkerius helps organizations visualize their knowledge graphs to make smarter decisions. Our clients are able to detect hidden connections to uncover fraud cases, investigate cyber threats, or better understand drug reactions. But first, why at Linkerius did we choose to work more closely with Stardog? As Mike was explaining, we are seeing more and more clients struggle with data silos. With data scattered across multiple tools, organizations are facing blind spots. So let's say that I'm investigating some clients that are suspected of loan fraud. If I just look at their transactions, I may reach the conclusion that the suspicious clients are in fact isolated. But perhaps if I can also bring in data about the phone numbers that they use to contact the support team, or if I can bring data about the claim investigators that looked at their behavior, I may discover connections that would suggest that they are in fact part of a larger criminal ring. That's the sort of challenges teams of analysts are using Linkerius graph visualization and analysis technology for. At Linkerius, we see Stardog as a great partner to, to help all clients with the first step of these projects, which is building an holistic picture of their data and revealing hidden connections across silos. So that's one part of the challenge with today's frag fragmented data landscape. What we are focusing on at Linkerius it is what comes next. How to leverage the resulting knowledge graphs on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's where our Linkerius Enterprise product comes in. So what is Linkerius Enterprise? Linkerius Enterprise is a web application that offers an easy to use interface to search and visualize knowledge graphs. With Linkerius Enterprise, analysts can explore their knowledge graphs without having to type code or to struggle with BI tools that are designed for tabular data. It leads to the discovery of new insights and better decisions. And we are now supporting Stardog, which means that with minimal configuration, you can connect Linkerius Enterprise to any startup database to unlock its content without having to use um, the Sparkle query language. We will see more about that in a minute via a demo. So how does, um, how does Linkerius Enterprise work and how does it integrate with, uh, with Stardog? So here is an architecture overview. Um, Linkerius Enterprise sits on top. Um, it's a software that is compatible with Windows, Linux, and Mac. And, and Mac. Um, you need to provide the address and credentials of your Stardog instance to, um, to Linkerius Enterprise. After that, um, all products will make the content of your Stardog database available to end users via its interface. So the data will still be stored in Stardog, but it will be searchable and viewable in Linkerius Enterprise. That means that you can leverage all of, the, all of Stardog's ability to combine various data sources, but also the more advanced capabilities like the support for semantic rezoning or machine learning, together with a very intuitive and, um, and easy to use interface. So it's a very complementary uh, combination. It helps address all of, the, all of the stages of a knowledge graph project, from building and reaching and analyzing a knowledge graph to making it available to, uh, to end users. Instead of adding to patch together various technology bricks, or two products integrate seamlessly to make your life easier. So who exactly is using Linkus Enterprise and what for? The common thread among our clients is that they are all struggling with complex connected data. In financial crime, um, we are seeing both financial companies and tax agencies uh, who are using Linkus Enterprise. We are, for example, working with a European bank, which wanted to have a better understanding of its clients to identify potential bad apples. The knowledge graph approach allowed them to enrich their client information with proprietary data about company ownerships, public watch list, and news article. The big change with that uh, was to bring together structured information with unstructured information. And that's where, that's where the, the, um, the NLP capabilities of Stardog can be very, very useful. When a new client comes in, um, the compliance officer of a client can understand not just the client, but what organizations and individual this client is indirectly associated with. And if the client is tied to suspicious entities, let's say, for example, a company uh, based in Iron or uh, a news article that mentions corruption, they can decide not to do business with him. 
So that's, that would be one, um, one, uh, one example of uh, the sort of work that we are conducting in uh, the field of financial crime. We are also seeing more and more government agencies that leverage knowledge graphs for security. And with Linkus Enterprise, uh, these clients are able to understand the networks of suspicious individuals by bringing together data about phone calls, emails, and other sources. They can identify potential accomplices and, generally speaking, be more effective at fighting criminal rings. In cybersecurity, our clients are typically looking at connections between routers, switches, applications, IPs, and so on. We are, for example, working with the red team of one of the largest cloud providers in the world, and they are using Linkus Enterprise to analyze the potential paths an attacker could use to access high-value assets within an IT infrastructure. And with that information, they can devise best ways to, uh, to stop these attacks and to protect better uh, the, um, the cloud provider. In the field of medical research, we are also working with drug companies. They are using the knowledge graph approach to extract structural information from research papers or internal documents. One of our clients is looking at the relationships between symptoms, articles, researchers, and drugs, for example. And its research team has been able to analyze drugs effects and identify smart ways to repurpose drugs to address new diseases. So that's an overview of, uh, of the use cases that, um, that we address at Linkus Enterprise. Now to show you, you, to show you what exactly Linkus Enterprise looks like, um, we have prepared a small demo. This demo will be centered on the movie graph provided by imdb.com. Uh, this demo will help us illustrate how to use Linkus Enterprise to explore and extract insights from complex data. So we know that the Starlog interface is designed for developers and requires no knowledge of the Sparkle query language to explore data. With Linkus Enterprise, um, what we will see is how easy it is to navigate knowledge graph without having to, uh, to code. In this demo, we will see actors in movies. Uh, these entities will be represented as nodes within a knowledge graph. And these nodes will be connected by relationships or edges um, representing uh, the, the, the relationships um, that, uh, that they may have. For the purpose of this demo, we will be exploring the, the network of a particular actor, Liam Neeson, and analyze the persons he has worked with uh, during his career. So this is the interface of, uh, of Linkers Enterprise. We can see the, um, the, the dashboard that users see when, uh, when they log in. I can see here my Stardog instance uh, and uh, the settings that uh, I had to set up uh, to connect to, uh, to it. So it's fairly straightforward, as you can see. And here we have a search bar that we can use um, to look up nodes of interest. So we are interested in Lion Nissan and we are going to, uh, to type uh, the name. So we see a few, um, a few results, including this one here which includes the, um, the keywords Lion Nissan in the, in the storyline. So let's click on that result. Okay. So we see a node that pops up. When we click on it, we can see detailed information on the left panel. So we can see uh, the storyline that we looked at previously. So Lion Nissan returns as a X cover operative Brian Mills. So that, that would be an explanation of what the movie is about. We can look up this URL to, uh, to see more information online, okay? So we can see that this is basically taken free. More interestingly, we can see that uh, this node has 17 relationships with other entities. And if I click on expand, I can see more information about these relationships. So we have 14 recommendation relationships with eight new movies. We have 17 recommendation relationships with 11 action movies. We are interested in locating Lion Nissan, so we are going to, uh, to be focusing on the worked on relationships that will uh, give us the, the list of actors that appeared in that movie. And this list should obviously contain Lion Nissan. So let's click on that. So we see new node that, uh, that pop up, okay? And we can click on each node to inspect, uh, to inspect it and see, uh, see more detail. Obviously, there's quite a lot of, of new relationships at, at this point. Um, and if, if we uh, look at one specific relationship, we can see uh, what's happening. 
So here we have a co-worker relationship between this, uh, this node and this, this node. And basically, every time two actors have appeared in the, in the same movie, they seem to also have um, a co-worker relationship. So we can probably do away with, uh, with these co-worker relationships that are making the graph more complex. And we are going to be filtering them out uh, to facilitate uh, the exploration of the data. So I'm opening up the panel on the right, clicking on design, clicking on edges, and now we are going to be filtering out uh, the non-relevant relationships. So I'm clicking on work down. That's the, the relationships that I want to focus on. I hit on filter, and now we have removed the co-worker relationships that were making the graph a little bit confusing. Okay, I'm closing the panel, centering the, the, the movie, and now we can see the five actors that appear in that movie. So I can see that this actor, for example, has appeared in 12 movies, uh, this one in 60, uh, 56, 56 movies, but this one um, has appeared in 180 movies, and this one in 156 movies. Liam Neeson is a bit of, a, of an older actor, he's also um, a star, so chances are that uh, is the, the actor connected to the most movies. I can perhaps verify that quickly by opening up uh, the URL here. Okay, indeed, that's the, the, web, the web page for, for Liam Neeson. Okay, I may want, you know, since we do not have the name of Liam Neeson on that, on that node, I may want to edit the graph and perhaps add a node property. So I'm going to do that. I'm adding a name, which is going to be Liam Neeson. I'm saving that and now, the, the information actually sh shows up uh, in, the, in the knowledge graph. So we can also use Linker's enterprise to, uh, to curate the, the knowledge graph. So we wanted to, um, to get an understanding of, uh, of the network that Lion Nissan has built uh, during, uh, during his carri careers and what other actors is connected to uh, via, via, via various movies. So it's time to, uh, to dive into the movies that Liam Neeson has appeared in and see via these movies who are the actors is connected to. So I'm going to click on expand. I only want to, uh, to see the, the action movies that he has appeared in, so I'm going to click here. So we are adding you no know, 16 new, uh, new nodes. At this point, I want to pivot uh, from the, the new movies that we have uh, added to the screen to the actors that are connected to, uh, to these movies. So I'm going to open up the design panel. I'm going to select the nodes based on the categories and I'm going to select all the action movies. So I'm clicking on action movies. I'm clicking on selecting. And now we have selected all uh, the action movies that are uh, on, the, on the canvas. I'm going to click on expand and we want to retrieve all uh, the actors that are connected to, uh, to these movies. So we want to expand the worked on relationships. Okay, I click on expand and what will happen next is that the canvas will be populated um, by all the movies in which Liam, um, all the actors that have appeared in the, in, the, in the movies. So I click on expand. New nodes will be added to, uh, to the screen. Okay, I may want to, perhaps to, uh, to Console the, the, the filter that we are currently um, activating, the one that displays the, the co worker relationships, just to give you an idea of um, how complex the, the situation can, uh, can, can be. I'm going to, uh, to actually remove these, uh, these relationships now. So I'm clicking on a recommendation, co worker, I'm selecting all of these relationships and I'm going to, uh, to go ahead and hide them uh, to, make the, to make the graph easier to, uh, to understand. Okay, so we have Lion Nissan uh, right in the middle and we can see uh, with, the, with the icons, the movies that he's connected to and the other nodes represent actors that have uh, co-starred with, uh, with Lion Nissan. So just by looking at, uh, at the data via the Linkus Enterprise interface, we can always already see some, uh, some patterns um, emerging. So for example, there are small clusters like this one here or this one here, where we have a movie 
and then a set of actors that are not connected to, uh, to, to anything else. So every time we have that, we have um, a movie that was uh, with a, with a cast, casting, uh, with a set of actors that was um, set up for this particular movie, but that never uh, re reappeared. So that's one sort of, a, of pattern, but we have different, different patterns. Here, for example, we have another subgraph, okay, where we have one, two, and three movies in which, um, in which uh, Lion Nissana has appeared. And we have one, two, three actors that have appeared in all the movies. So it's, um, it's a different, uh, different pattern uh, where the same people are appearing in the, in the same, same movies um, time and time uh, and, and again. So it's more of a, of a series of, a, of rated movies. I can click on a, on a given, uh, given uh, movie here. I can see the storyline. It reads the retired CIA agent Brian Mills. Okay. So that would be um, a taken movie. Here we can also see that the storyline story line mentioned Brian Mills. And here we can also see that the storyline story mentioned Brian Mills. So basically, it's, um, it's, the, it's a series of, uh, of movies with the same, uh, same casting. And that's, you know, immediately pop up on, a, on, on the screen. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit again. Um, there's also another interesting pattern here in this subgraph where we have one, two, and three movies where the actors are always different. So here we have three actors, three actors, and one, two, three actors that are not appearing in, a, in the other movies, but there's a common, common thread, which is this, uh, this node connected to the three movies um, at, uh, at once. I can click on, uh, on the URL, look it up, and see more information. So basically, this node represents um, a director and produ producer. So it sounds like uh, this guy actually uh, did a few uh, few movies, uh, three movies specifically with uh, with Lion Nissan, always assembling a different uh, set of, uh, of of actors. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. We can also, with the Linkus Enterprise interface, uh, slice and dice the data. So let's say that um, we want to, uh, to only um, display certain, uh, certain movies and, uh, and remove other movies based, let's say, on, a, on the storyline uh, or on some other property. I can do that by opening the panel on the right, clicking on design. And let's say that I only want to, uh, to display the, um, the movies with the highest rating, ra ratings. So I'm going to select you know, these ratings. I'm going to hit filter, and we have removed um, all the all the non-relevant nodes. So we can focus on the best action movies, basically that uh, <laughs> that uh, Lion Nissan has appeared in. So that's one filter, and we can combine different uh, different filters, and we can filter based on any um, property field which is present in the in the data. We can also save the visualization as an interactive object. So let's say that we want to say that as Lion Nissan's network. Okay, so the, the visualization is now saved. I may want to, to export the visualization um, to, um, to data format like Excel for some post-processing, or maybe I want to, uh, to export to a picture format like PNG or SVG. That's uh, very easy and intuitive to, uh, to do. Similarly, let's say that uh, in the course of investigating my knowledge graph, I have uncovered uh, some interesting insights that I want to share with my colleagues. I can click on menu, click on share, and in a few clicks, I can share the actual uh, results of my investigation with a colleague. So here I'm sharing that with John, adding him to the visualization, and John, from that point on, we'll be able to, uh, to see what we, have, um, what we have uncovered and perhaps take the investigation further 
or add some um, some uh, some comments of his of his own. So this is an example of how to explore knowledge graph with Linkus Enterprise to discover new insights. If you are also struggling with understanding complex connected data, the Linkus and startup teams would love to, to hear from you. That's great, John. Thank you so much. So hopefully uh, what we've done here is, is demonstrated that effectively the combination of our Stardog Enterprise Knowledge Graph and Lincurious's seamless visualization engine is quite frankly a match made in heaven. You know, I think with these two platforms, global enterprises you know, finally have a means to visualize all of their data and all in italics and bold there, um, you know, regardless of where it sits, the type of data, structured, unstructured, uh, and so forth. Um, so obviously we are, we are unbelievably excited about this partnership um, and, and we're, we're very, very fortunate to, to be in this position. So there's been a couple of questions that have come in over, uh, over the course of the, the conversation here. Uh, so very much appreciate you guys doing that. Let me throw a couple at them uh, live and have Mark and John, M Mike and John uh, answer them. So the first one was, uh, in addition to the usual trove of relational data, my team was recently tasked with ingesting a bunch of unstructured data as well. Is that something you could support and visualize? Mr. Grove, do you wanna tackle that? I think that the short version is absolutely, but Mike, do you wanna jump in a bit? Uh, yeah, um, the Stardog, we didn't get into it deeply, but supports a, a subsystem called Bytes, which is designed for processing unstructured content, be it text, audio, video, um, potentially linking with third party services for processing that content and pulling all of the extracted metadata into the knowledge graph. And then once it's there, it's very neatly viewed and um, kind of dissected with Lingurious. Uh, another question that just came in, uh, and this is Jean for you, is Lingurious a hosted platform or does it run locally? So Lingurious is a web application. It can be installed on premise or in the cloud. Uh, which uh, whichever option works best for for clients, uh, we can uh, we can support it. Wonderful and kind of a, a follow up that's not the same person but um, related to the the Linkerius interface. How much customization does Linkerius offer relative to uh, drawing the graph? So layouts, nodes, nodes, edges, uh, and then adjacency matrices. Yeah, so um, there are various customization options uh, in the Linkers Enterprise interface. Uh, you can switch between layouts, uh, and we support a force rate layout. Uh, we support a Yakult layout, a radial layout, and a geospatial layout. Um, and during the course of an investigation, uh, users can switch between the, these, uh, these various layouts. It's also possible to customize the, um, the colors, icons, sizes for the nodes and the relationships. All of that is very uh, easy to, um, to, uh, to customize. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see, a couple other, uh, I think you just mentioned this geospatial piece, but let's maybe put a, uh, put a bow on it. So does Linkurious and Stardog, does that um, partnership support the visualization of geospatial data? And if so, how is it supported? So provided that um, that the, the nodes have geospatial coordinates, um, e.g. Uh, latitude and, and longitudes, uh, this data can then be displayed on a, on a geospatial map within Linkus Enterprise. Uh, another question here, uh, how much can you change uh, the graph visuals? So shape, colors, et cetera? So all, um, I mean, it's possible to customize the, the shapes um, of the nodes and the relationships. It's also possible to, uh, to associate uh, colors, sizes, or icons to specific properties uh, within, uh, within your graph. So you can say, okay, here's um, a company node. I want you know, this color and this, uh, this icon. All of that uh, can, be, uh, can be customized. Great. Uh, another, I think, a, a very good question. Uh, so I like the visualization, it's a good start. However, this example is, is about data from IMDB, which is data from within one data set. So not on data over multiple data silos. How does this help break through data silos? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, and, and we, just in terms of the demo, we could have certainly expanded it out. There's a lot of other relevant data on the web, 
that is effectively more data silos, a microcosm of the enterprise environment. You know, there's information from Netflix, uh, from Rotten Tomatoes. You can combine it with information from Wikipedia. And this is where Startalk's virtual graph capabilities helps break down the walls of those silos where we can reach into those disparate data sources and query the data in situ. So it doesn't disrupt kind of the normal operation of those data silos. They can exist and continue to fulfill their purpose, but the knowledge graph is able to bring them into the data set and create that larger cohesive whole. And then, you know, the part you like the visualization at, at, at that point, it can be visualized like any other piece of data that's addressable through Stardog. Uh, there's another one here. Um, so is it possible to unify, say, customer account financial relational data with uh, corresponding data from, say, contracts? That's actually a good kind of follow-up question. Um, this is kind of the intersection of our virtual graph capabilities. Um, a lot of that information is going to be found in legacy relational sources, uh, but contracts are obviously going to be unstructured. So being able to bridge the gap and unify those two different worlds using virtual graphs and bytes, kind of all within the knowledge graph under the same roof, um, gives the ability to query them. And once it's queryable, you can bring all that to life with Uncurious. Uh, so just, uh, I know we're, we're sort of running out of time and I, I don't think we'll be able to get to all the questions because they're frankly flooding in right now, uh, but we will uh, 100% follow up with everybody individually. We have everybody's, um, everybody's information that is, that is submitted a question. So maybe let's do, let's do one last one uh, at the buzzer here. Uh, is it possible to obtain the Sparkle query, allowing us to obtain the same visualization results after filtering in Uncurious? Um, no, it's not. Um, you can type any Sparkle query within the Micros interface and visualize the, the result of that, but you cannot turn a visualization into, um, into a Sparkle query. So that is, uh, again, we, um, there are a lot of open questions and we're going to follow up with everybody individually. Um, just uh, trying to be respectful of everybody's time, but in, in, in the interim, um, above are the ways to, to get in touch with us. Um, please do reach out to learn anything more about what you heard today. Uh, if anything tickles your fancy or you feel like maybe a fit, we'd love to chat more um, and hear about your direct use case. Uh, so thank you again for, for the time, everyone. This was, uh, in my view, time well spent. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And again, we will follow up not only with direct questions individually, but with the recording and the slides over the next day or two. Bye for now.